Greetings from the center of the universe. My name is Kelvin, and this is the sun. And this is the earth. This is the planet we live on. Oh, there are other planets in our solar system too. Oh, there's quite a few of them. Eight of them to be exact, all orbiting the sun. Now, the sun is a star, and there's millions of stars in our galaxy. So are there other planets orbiting other stars? Yes, there are other planets orbiting other stars. We've found thousands of them. We call them exoplanets. Exo meaning outside of our solar system. Now, the, the stars are really far away. So how did we find all of these planets? I'll show you one of the ways in this video of exo explorations. It's easy enough for us to take pictures of the planets in our solar system. Most of the planets are close enough to get great photos. It sure would be nice to be able to take pictures of planets orbiting other stars. Indeed, some exoplanets have been discovered just by trying to take a picture of them. But we've found the method to be really difficult. This has only worked for stars that are really close to us, and for planets no smaller than Jupiter. This is the first direct image of an exoplanetary system taken by Dr. Christian Marois right here in NRC Hertzberg Astronomy and Astrophysics. All of the planets in this image are larger than Jupiter. Good luck finding an Earth-sized exoplanet. Most stars are so far away that there is little hope of being able to see any exoplanets that they may be orbiting. I'll explain. The part of a telescope camera that collects light is made up of thousands of tiny squares called pixels, just like this one right here. Any section of the sky under one pixel shows up as one square of light. There's no way to make out any shape of a star or planet that is smaller than a pixel. All we see is the total light that it emits. We couldn't hope to see a planet in that image unless it was one of those really close stars mentioned before. So it seems we'll never be able to learn about them at all. But there are alternatives to directly seeing the planet. I'll show you how we can detect the planet just by using the light from the few pixels we do get. This more indirect method involves the star's light being blocked. Hmm, light being blocked. Doesn't the moon do that to the sun from time to time? It is quite the coincidence that the moon sometimes passes directly in front of the sun, blocking it out completely in what is called a total solar eclipse. When a total solar eclipse happens, the sky gets dark because the sunlight is being blocked by the moon. And we're underneath the moon's shadow. This is a spectacular way that the light from the sun gets blocked. You can really notice the change in brightness. A total solar eclipse makes it as dark as dusk. Sometimes the moon only covers part of the sun. This is a partial solar eclipse. When there's a partial solar eclipse, it doesn't get completely dark, but there is noticeable dimming in the sky. Two of the planets in our solar system do something similar to a solar eclipse. Mercury and Venus also sometimes move across the sun. But they are farther away from us than the moon, so they don't completely block the sun. The sky doesn't go dark, so does the planet block any light at all? Of course it does. It just blocks very little. Using telescopes designed for viewing the sun, one can occasionally see Venus as a dark circle moving across. This is called a transit. The same thing can happen with Mercury, but it appears as a much smaller dot. For these planets, we can still see their shape and determine what they look like. But remember that for exoplanets, when the star is really far away, all we see are some pixels. And all we can tell is how much total light we are seeing. The key to detecting an exoplanet, then, lies in the changes in the amount of light that we see from the star. So what happens to the total light when an exoplanet moves across its star? To find out, I'll build an exoplanet transit detecting device. Uh, well, maybe I'll make a pretend exoplanet transit detection device. And I'll do a demonstration that simulates a planet moving across the star, where we only see the total light. You can build an exoplanet transit detection device yourself using a paper towel tube or even the tube from a toilet paper roll. Oh, hey, here's the toilet paper. 
I'm gonna make one right now. All right, we've got our exoplanet transit detection device. So what I do next is I would grab a light and when I shine the light through one end of the tube, the light comes through the other tube on the paper there. So the light is scattering through both of the pieces of paper and it's scattering the light out. That way, if I ever do put an object in front of the light, instead of being able to see the silhouette and the shape, it actually just uh, dims the light. Now I've got two coins here to represent exoplanets. I've got a toonie for a big planet and a dime for a smaller planet. And to make it easier on myself, I uh, tape them up so I can hang them down without my fingers getting in the way. And I will have the coins move across the flashlight like a transit moving it across the star. And it will block some of the light and dim the light on the other end. All right, so I've recorded that already, that this experiment using my uh, smartphone's light and I set it up in a way that was much easier to film than this, but otherwise this way uh, usually works just fine. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I've got the toonie and I'm moving it across the flashlight and we're looking at the other end of the tube. And you can see as the coin enters, it uh, gets dark and then it gets brighter as I move it back. Now, when I switch over to the dime, you can see that when it goes into the light, it goes dimmer and then gets back to bright again as it goes out. But actually, if we compare the two, the Toonie transit gets much darker and the dime transit gets not quite as dark. The smaller coin blocks less of the light in total and then so it, it, you notice a dimming but it's not as much. And that's the same with transiting exoplanets. The smaller the planet, the less dimming there is and perhaps the harder it is to notice. Uh, a bigger planet compared to the star that it's orbiting will block much more of the light and be more noticeable. So how does this demonstration, where we can easily see the dimming of the light, compare to actually detecting exoplanets that are like hundreds or thousands of light years away? Well, I measured the area of the coins compared to the end of the tube, the area of the end of the tube. I found out that the uh, toonie blocks 41% of the light and the dime blocks 18% of the light, so it's significantly less. How much light do planets typically block, though? Let's pretend to use this demonstration on our own solar system. If we pretend to be really far away from our solar system and watch the transit of Jupiter go across, it would only block 1% of the light coming from the sun. I would need to find a much smaller object than these coins to be able to, uh, to represent that in our demonstration. And if we wanted to detect the Earth, it would only block 0.01% of the light from the Sun. Now I've got a piece of quinoa here. Now I measured this to be about uh, 3 millimeters in diameter. And if I try this with the uh, demonstration here, and it transits across the light at the end of the tube and blocks some of the light, it would only block 0.5% of the light. So it blocks about as, half as much as Jupiter, but it would be a bit smaller than Jupiter and it would certainly be larger than the Earth. Um, to represent the Earth, I would need like a tiny grain of sand. 
When I tried this demonstration using the quinoa, I wasn't able to see anything at all. And it didn't show up on camera when I tried recording it either. Uh, using a grain of sand would be even harder. It seems that this method of detecting exoplanets isn't very useful for properly sized planets like Earth or Jupiter even. So how do astronomers do it? Well, the telescopes they use, like Kepler and TESS, they have very sensitive imaging detectors, very sensitive cameras, much more sensitive than the camera that is being used to film this video. They can detect very slight changes, like fractions of fractions of a percentage of the light that dips down when a transit goes across. So it's a good thing that they have way better eyesight than we do. Exo Explorations is a grade school level educational resource that teaches about stars in the sky and the planets that orbit them. You can learn more at centeroftheuniverse.org slash exoexplorations.